All right. Hello, I'm Alan Zadka, director of the audio program here at New Degree Studios, which is a new uh, offshoot of New Degree Press. And uh, some of you here in the room have, as we uh, have been chatting, have made books with us. Some of you have not. And that's all great because this is its own independent program. And um, our, I'm going to talk for the next I guess about 40, 45 minutes and really walk you through the entirety of the program. And then we're gonna do a Q&A session afterwards. So please hold your questions until the end. I am a verbal whirlwind. Uh, I will be giving a lot of information, but don't worry, as you can see, I hit the record button. So you'll be able to review all this. And if anything um, doesn't make sense, you need clarity on it, please do uh, ask questions afterwards. So I'm going to uh, screen share now and get my uh, presentation up here. Audio shows cohort 1.0, an exciting way to enhance your brand. Um, you know, those of you that either have a book already or uh, are doing things like you guys mentioned you co-host a uh, podcast so you have a brand you have a business that you're building and this audio show is going to be a great way for you to continue to put yourself out there and create some immediate profitability and I'm going to explain that as we go through this so what is an audio show at New Degree Studios um for us, how we define it is it's a short, dynamic audio presentation that's either informational or instructional in nature. So we do a full season of eight to 10 episodes. They're pre-recorded or what we call canned. So the difference for us when audio show is not for us, it's not a podcast, which we consider to be either a live presentation or a regular serial that airs at a particular time. So usually with a podcast, you do and you you um, produce an episode and you air it. Uh, with us, we're going to do a full season of eight to ten episodes and then put those out for distribution. Um, also, we're not doing radio dramas, which is a dramatic presentation of a fiction novel. So that requires uh, multiple actor voices. Oh, there's people in the waiting room. Give me one second. Let me admit everybody in. Okay. Hello, hello, new people who entered. I did just start, but I just started a minute ago. So you haven't missed much. I'm really defining what an audio show is here at New Degree Studios. And um, just quickly, it's a short dynamic audio presentation that we're gonna do a full season of eight to 10 episodes. We don't consider it to be the same as a podcast, which we consider to be a live presentation or a regular serial that airs at a particular time. And we don't consider it to be the same as a radio drama, which is a dramatic presentation of a fiction novel, which requires multiple voice actors and a lot of sound effects, original music and other expensive pieces. So what are the best types of shows for this kind of audio show? Informational shows about nonfiction topics in our test run, our creators did shows about health and fitness, healthy baking practices, internet security, how to improve culture in corporate settings, topics like that. Workshops do really well, how to self-help classes, um, especially if the creator does one topic for 10 minutes of show and provides homework or action plan activities. Fiction authors who are discussing and or teaching aspects of the creative process and using their book as part of the lesson plan rather than attempting to dramatize their fiction novel. So like I said, we're not doing um, radio dramas, but fiction authors who want to talk about the creative process itself do really well in this format. Informational shows about a nonfiction topic that uses data, interviews, and other non-visual tools also do well in this format. So this is an eight-month program that a lot of people uh, will probably finish in five to six months, but we want to give people extra time because um, one of the reasons why 
we want to give everybody extra time is because uh, those of you in the who came from the book division know that we have the Creator Institute where you get a lot of teaching and then you came into the book program at New Degree. Obviously, this is not the same format as that. And so we're going to be doing uh, enough teaching for those of you who are first timers building this kind of show so that you'll be able to get it done. Um, you're going to have eight months from the time you start in the program uh, to complete your entire season. The program's broken into four phases, which I'm going to describe through this presentational uh, presentation. And uh, anyone who needs more time than the eight months, um, we can grant it to you, but you know, obviously there'll be some additional costs. The first cohort begins October 1st. The second cohort begins March 1st. So each cohort is gonna last eight months, but we're gonna start a new cohort every four months. So they will overlap. So there's different options and you'll hear me talk sometimes about something that I call the nine pathways. And I don't want that to become confusing terminology. What the first pathway is, is how long the show is going to be. You can uh, do a 10 minute show, a 20 minute show or a 30 minute show. Two minutes of your show is gonna be used for the opening and closing. You can do shows that are shorter than 10 minutes, um, but the cost is the same for five minute shows and eight minute shows. So, you know, it really depends on what you want to do if you have a shorter episode in mind. Some people who do quick workshops and exercises do want to do those kinds of shows. The second pathway is about um, how much of, of it will be scripted. You can do fully or partially scripted uh, shows, which then you'll be in our writing process. We do a three draft writing process that I'm gonna explain uh, during this presentation. But some people really know their stuff really well and just wanna shoot from the hip and do a completely improvised show. We do not force you to write a script if you don't want to or need to. But you know, usually people who do that end up recording more takes and seeing what works. Um, so there's different styles and different ways of doing that. And we're open-minded about that here. Is the, the third pathway, is the material you're using derived from your book or your head? So some show creators will pull a great deal of material for their season from a book they've written. Some show creators will pull half of their material from the book, but also create all new material for the other half. And some of you will create an original show that doesn't derive from a book or any other source. These are all acceptable and viable with us. So just want you to understand that there's a lot of opportunities and we like to know ahead of time what pathways you're on uh, so that you know I can match you up with the right producer and we can you know really kind of put you in a good situation to succeed with how your um, show is going to work. So why why eight months? Why is the program eight months? I talked about it a little bit. Um, but different aspects of your show will affect how long each episode takes you to produce. 10-minute episodes with less segments obviously take less work than 20 or 30-minute episodes. Fully scripted segments are more labor-intensive than improvised ones. Interviewees may need time to be properly scheduled and prepped with questions ahead of time. Some creators may get their entire season creatively completed quickly, but will want to keep selling ads. I'm going to be talking about this a lot as we move forward until profits are maximized. So we want you to make a lot of money by selling advertisements for your show. You're going to be selling 20 second ads at $3,000 a pop. I'm going to be talking about that a lot. All segments for an episode must be complete for it to go to post-production, including the receival of the 20 second advertisements from your sponsors plus receiving permissions to use inserts such as songs. So all of that may take a little while to put together for each episode. So we give you enough time to do it. So the pre-phase and three phases. Um, the pre-phase is our organization phase. Phase one, we're just gonna build the pilot episode, which is your first episode. Phase two, the rest of the season. And phase three is about distributing the show. 
So in our organizational pre-phase, obviously you'll sign the contract. I talk about the pathways. You're going to kind of choose those and let us know what kind of show you want to build. You are going to get a promotional video with Hannah Enriquez's staff. Um, those of you who have been in the book division understand this already. You did one uh, for your crowdsource campaign in the book division. So you're going to get a promotional video to talk about your show that's built in. It's, there's no additional cost there. Um, preparedness exercises are something that I created that uh, you'll take some time to fill them out. And basically, it's going to go over everything that uh, we expect from you and show what you already have, what don't you have. Some of you may already have professional microphones and equipment. Some of you may not. Um, some of you may have you know, episode scripted already or not. So this is a good way for you to get into your first meeting with your producer and already, you know, um, have an understanding of where you are with everything that we expect, you know, early in the program. Um, and then in the preface, we'll also do sound tests. If you already have a microphone, we recommend a particular mic, but if you already have one, then we just want to hear it. Uh, our post-production team wants to hear it and clear it and make sure that um, both your space and the microphone itself are proper so that you don't go ahead and start recording all kinds of stuff that ends up being unusable. Phase one, which is uh, the pilot episode. So what we've discovered in, in our experiment is that it becomes easier to um, sell advertisements, uh, advertising space, I should say, and bring in sponsors if we already have a pilot for them to listen to and they can listen to the show already. Some of you um, uh, may be interested in going after advertising right away and we're gonna allow that, but there are plenty of ways to finance this. So the initial financial obligation is $4,000. And you're going to pay us $3,500 of that. We want you to raise another $500 for equipment and fees related to the project, which may include a professional microphone, external storage hard drive to store your files on, interview software, which the really good ones have a subscription fee, not much, generally like $20 a month or so, uh, soundproofing method materials if you need that, distributor fee costs, etc. So we just want you to understand that things, you know, cost money in the world. And we, we want you to put that money together up front so that you're not, you know, surprised later on. You have the discretionary funds that you need in order to make sure that you can take care of everything without stopping your workflow. So the three methods of funding in phase one, um, obviously you can pre-fund, just pay us. You can do a crowdsource campaign. Uh, those of you who are in the book division probably did one of these with Indiegogo. We're now using a great program called Attendees. We have a business relationship with them. What's going to be great about that relationship is that uh, entities that do buy advertisements from you will be able to go right onto attendees and pay us through attendees. So you won't have to collect any of the money. I'm going to talk about that. Um, again, at greater length later on in this presentation. So you can use one, two, or all three methods to raise the initial 4K at your discretion. And your producer, and let me talk about your producer a little bit. You're going to be paired with a producer. Those who are in the book division, that's like your, you know, you, you may have had a, a marketing and revision editor. Um, it's a person who is really skilled at this and understands this program and is going to be with you from start to finish the entire way and helping you out with every aspect of this. You'll be building the show, but your producer will be on hand to vet um, all of your stuff and help you uh, make sure that everything is proper and correct. So uh, you can use one, two, or all three of these methods to raise that initial 4K and um we have the templates, of course, available on day one for both crowdsourcing and selling ads. So we can help you right away, no matter what method you want to 
choose. So let's get into the creative stuff now. We're going to build your entire pilot from scratch, teaching you the right methods and providing you tools that you'll use a lot in phase two when you have seven to nine episodes to create in a timely fashion. So for these organizational exercises, we're only going to focus on the pilot in phase one. So obviously, we're going to choose your episode topic. We're going to create a segment by segment outline, and we're going to create a full production schedule. And what those, what those really are, are the methods for creating a full organization for yourself, um, a segment by segment outline. When you break that down with an episode of something you're producing, you, you will understand, okay, I'm going to be speaking for, you know, two minutes to introduce the subject. Then maybe I'll have a sound effect or a sound bite or a piece of music. And then maybe I'll have, uh, another bit with me talking for three minutes, then I'll have a, a guest or an expert interview. And so when you break it down in your outline, you can see all the pieces that you need to put together with your main files that you will record and the uh, inserts that you're going to be putting in, and that will keep you organized. And you know, some people feel for one episode, do I really need to do that? What we're doing is teaching you the methods so when you're putting together seven to nine episodes later, you have these organizational tools. So we want you to master this stuff early so that it becomes very easy late. Uh, the production schedule, anyone who doesn't make a production schedule and you're doing a, a whole season worth of episodes, uh, you're really shooting yourself in the foot. We don't allow that here. We want you to do this the right way. So we're going to help you build an entire calendar where you're going to plan out every element of the show and figure out when you'll be writing, when you're doing your research, uh, when you're going to reach out to people to do interviews, et cetera, when you're actually going to do those interviews. Pardon me. So uh, we'll have all of that blocked out and that will keep you organized. Research phase, you may need to do research to put a segment together. It's another reason why we provide eight months for your entire season. If you already have the research done on everything you want to include in your show, fantastic. But we don't expect that to be true. You're going to be encouraged to dot every I and cross every T. Um, when you're doing a nonfiction show, accuracy does matter. So the writing process, or not, if you want to do a fully improvised show, for every segment of every episode that you decide to script, you're going to go through our three draft process. So the rough draft, that could be just a big info dump. Uh, you're going to write a crappy first draft materials that you don't never spell check ever. The producer will not read these. They might look them over for a few seconds, make sure you did it, see if there's you know something. But nobody really should ever read these ever. You know, they're your rough draft. The second draft, this is the real episode script, written as well as you can to be read and vetted by your producer who's going to provide you excellent notes on them. And the final polish, which is what you're going to actually record after you implement your producer's notes and anything else you feel that you need to do. We're going to have um, really good workshops on things um, that... In fact, you'll have access to some of the workshops we've recorded for the audiobook division um, that'll go through things like I, I did one where I talked about mind mazes and tongue twisters and breath control issues. And so um, we have some, some really good material already in house. We're going to continue building these so that you guys have the best information on how to create scripts that are meant to be uh, verbalized, which is different than um, how things just look when you're writing for a book. Those of you that are going to improvise your segments, and some of you may do some written and some improvised segments, if you feel comfortable just shooting from the hip and recording material without using a script, you can. But what you will do is you'll create a bullet point outline of the thing that you'll the things you'll talk about. Your producer will look at that and have a collaboration discussion with you. And then You'll probably want to do a lot of takes for each segment. Your producer is going to listen to the best three of those, help you uh, pick which one, 
is the best one. Sometimes you can just do one or two and, you know, hit a hole in one or really get it, nail it down if you really know the stuff. But usually those first few takes with improvisation, you're really just kind of getting used to talking about the information. You're going to drift. You're going to go off topic. You're going to mumble a little bit. You're going to, you know, um, do a lot of that ums you know so you're going to want to go back and do more takes until you can really comfortably talk about it very smoothly and those are the takes that we want in your final product dynamic inserts so inserts break up monotony as charismatic and lively as you are you will want to diversify your show segments with fun inserts that may include, but are not limited to, interviews with guests or experts, sound effects, sound bites, which are short verbal clips, generally no longer than five words, short music interludes that are usually just a few seconds long. There's a limit to how many inserts you can have depending on the length of the show. We wanna diversify. We don't wanna have what, what we label a ping pong effect when you have too many inserts and then the show, it becomes hard to follow. It's not dynamic, it's chaotic and, and we don't want that. So there'll be a limitation on this, but um, by creating a dynamic scenario for yourself with your show, it's gonna be fun, it's gonna be interesting and the flow will be really nice. Other things we're gonna do in phase one, in addition to building your pilot, you are gonna get original cover art um, so this is going to be promotional art for your uh, distribution and promotional needs. You're also going to pick two major distributors from a curated list of the best out there. We pick them now so that the art team can modify the size of your art to match what the requirements are for your first two distributors on their page. So that later when your show is ready, we're not trying to get the art after your show is already ready. You'll just be able to distribute it. Um, you'll also get the opening and closing materials that will run throughout your entire season. So your opening and your closing will be consistent on every episode. So whatever that sounds like with uh, music and with you talking and introducing your subject, uh, we'll have fun with that. And then that will be baked in and we'll be able to just use that on every episode to open and close every show. I know that I went through all that really fast and um, and I'm a whirlwind. I know you probably have a lot of questions on that, but I'm gonna go through the rest of the program and jot down those questions and we'll do a big Q and A at the end. So phase two, the entire season and what I like to call the big money. So phase two starts the moment we put the wraps on all aspects of phase one. This will be sooner or later for different creators based on any number of factors, based on how uh, you're financing, based on how many episodes you're doing and the length of those episodes. If you're doing heavy pen script writing or just improvising, some people will be sooner than later. So I don't like to put a, an exact time frame on when phase one will end and phase two will begin. We don't want to start phase two later than month four of the program. Then you're kind of getting into deep water with how much time you have to build the whole rest of the season. But you will be building seven to nine episodes, depending on the length of your show. Um, what I mean by that is if you do the 10 minute or 20 minute shows, you'll have a 10 episode season. If you do a 30 minute show, you'll have an eight episode season. And you're going to be selling advertising space first to pay for the full season commitment and then to make a ton of personal profit. Here we go. Oop, went the wrong way. Ah, okay. This is the right one. Organizational exercises for real. So as I mentioned, um, when we're doing the pilot episode, we're going to be doing a segment by segment outline and we're going to uh, do a production schedule. And for one episode that might, you know, you, that might seem frivolous if you have like five segments and like two of them are you talking and one of them is one piece of music and one of them is an interview. Why do I need to organize all that? Well, we're teaching you that stuff in phase one so that when you have seven to nine episodes and you're putting the pieces together for different episodes simultaneously, 
you can keep everything nice and organized. And so you'll have the understanding of how to keep all that stuff balanced and organized from the get go before you need that information. Um, so, so that's why we do it in phase one. Uh, anybody that doesn't build a segment by segment outline in a full production schedule when attempting to build seven to nine episodes of an audio show will absolutely fall. We've seen this will absolutely fall apart and get wrecked during the process. And in our experiment, I told everybody, we want you to do these exercises. We need to see how they work. The people that did them had a, it was smooth sailing through the whole thing. The people like, I don't need to do that. They were stressed and it wasn't, it, it wasn't fun for them until they went back and actually put these things together. So we want you to do this. It's very important that we do these organizational exercises. So financing and creative work are simultaneous in phase two. You'll be constantly selling advertising space to third-party entities, your sponsors, during the phase two process. You will also be constantly putting together your main segments, interviews, and inserts, which includes doing research, writing scripts, recording segments, vetting and gathering creative materials. This is all going to happen simultaneously. Here's the big one. $15,000 is no big deal. So in phase one, you raise $3,500 for New Degree Studios, but the full payment for the entire season to the company will be 15 k Don't log out. Let me explain this to you. You are not going to be on the hook or contractually obligated to pay us the 15 k out of pocket. That will never happen. Don't worry. But you will make the money strictly through selling 20-second advertisements at 3K per ad to third-party sponsors. We're going to teach you how our creators have succeeded at this in the past because, one, we teach you how to find one-to-one -one alignment and create a fantastic list of entities to reach out to, as well as how to find the right contact person at those entities. Your producer is going to role play calls with you as well as vet your call script, which will, which basically you'll derive from our strategic templates. So you'll know what to say, how to say it, and who to say it to. Now, keep in mind that $3,000 is considered sock drum money for most entities. You're going to be able to lock down sales with the lowest person on the company ladder. Usually, the the first person that you talk to has authorization to uh, clear as much as ten thousand dollars worth of space. So you can often sell up to three episodes to the the first person that you talk to at a company or entity. Um, so unless you do a big deal for many episodes, that first person is also possibly the last person that you'll talk to at that entity. All the tools and assistance are here. While some entities will want you to use their sponsorship contracts, and we advise that you do so under those cases, New Degree Studios will have a contract ready for you to provide to sponsors. So you don't have to worry about that. We have that. We're going to collect all monies from sponsors through our business relationship with attendees. You will not have to personally collect money. This is going to look professional. It's going to put your sponsors at ease that they're doing business with a production company that's a legitimate business entity. Uh, there is a processing fee from Stripe for this that's unavoidable. I think it's 2.5%. But we have made the decision internally this is the best method available. And I will jump on Zoom calls with you and your sponsors to close sales if you need him, that's me, to back up your play. So they may say, can we talk to somebody at the company? Well, you do have a producer. Um, the producer is more you know, on the creative end. For closing sales like this, just send me a DM. Alan, my sponsor, wants to talk to someone at the company. I will always take those Zoom calls and um, not to not to toot my horn, but I'm pretty good in those kinds of calls. Uh, I find those kinds of sales conversations to be fun, and I'll put you over really well. Entities include corporations and other profit-based companies, nonprofit organizations, government, religious, and educational institutions, 
private wealthy individuals or groups who sponsor your show. That's not the entire list. It's just the most likely suspects who pay for third party advertisements for whom you can quickly locate one to one alignments with. So let's make a full season together. You're going to be free to create through the entire phase two process, building episodes in any order that makes logical sense. What I mean by that is we don't care if you create all of episode seven before episode three. That's irrelevant since you're going to be distributing the entire season all at once later. But we prefer you build complete episodes through the cohort that can be finished in post-production. Don't scatter around and have a lot of half-finished episodes and dump the entire season on post-production seven and a half months into the program, you know, when we've got two weeks left to, you know, to close it all down. So your producer and post-production team are going to get involved with one episode for every 2K you raise in the process. Let me explain this. The reason why you're not going to be on the hook for 15K is because you're going to raise the money. We're going to have the money. And um, and then you can move forward with your producer vetting your stuff and post-production then completing the episodes. So um, that's going to save us the trouble of having to say, well, our post-production team made this episode. They need to get paid. You owe us, you know, $8,000. No, instead you can put together all the creative materials and continue to work on selling advertising space. And once you like sell two advertisements, that 6K, you can finish three more episodes. So we're going to work it like that. And that way, um, it, it's just a nice way of making sure that you don't get obligated for the salaries of our producer, producing team and post-production team because you'll be raising the money to pay them. Now, let's make a profit. This is my favorite slide in the whole thing. So once you've paid us the entire 15K obligation, 3,500 in phase one, 12,500 in phase two, now it's your turn to make money. So you can basically, what's normal is sign one ad for 10 minutes of your show. Um, so if you do a 10 minute show, one ad at $3,000 for 10 episodes is $30,000. You only gave us 15. So that's $15,000 for you to keep. 20 minute shows, two ads at 3,000 times 10 episodes, that's 60K. That's $45,000 you've made for yourself before you have even distributed your show. And then if you do a 30 minute show, we're going to do eight episodes, but you can do three ads per. That's 72K. That's 57K profit. Right. So so these numbers are based on subtracting 15K, obviously. Um, if you raise money through crowdsourcing in phase one, your profit might be even slightly higher. So obviously, you're going to have to pay government taxes. And I mentioned the processing fee through Stripe. And like I said, I think that's 2.5%. Um, uh, I will get you those numbers later. You own your show. Once we're paid the 15K, we're done looking for any financial compensation from you. You own 100% of the rights to your show. You can give the show away on platforms for free to please your sponsors and grow your audience larger. Um, or you can sell seats to your classroom or build an audience on platforms where they need to pay to listen. This is at your discretion. 100% of that profit, if you decide to monetize, is yours. New Degree Studios will never seek royalties or payments of any kind, period. No small print, no ugly surprises. You own your show. So phase three, you've made your show. In phase one, we pick two main distribution platforms. In phase three, your producer is going to help you properly upload the files to those platforms and make sure that you're able to distribute properly you are responsible for paying the distributor fees, but that's why we raised an extra 500 in phase one to pay for ancillary costs like these. It's These subscriptions are generally not um, expensive. So, you know, they, they should be pretty affordable for you, like $100 a year or something like that for some of them. Someone like Anchor doesn't charge a fee, but they uh, do expect 
a portion of your advertising money. So be aware that if you go with them, you'll have to cut them a slice of your profit from the ads that you already sold. So just be aware of how platforms, different platforms work. Uh, so it's up to you if you're going to charge money for the show, make additional profit or give it away for free. You made some good money selling ads, so this is a business decision. There's no definitive right or wrong on that. There's only what's right or wrong for your brand and how to achieve your goals for this project. So the next step is making season two. So you can continue with us if you really liked what happened in season one, and you can keep coming back and making more seasons. Um, we, we'd love to do additional seasons with you or a show about a different topic with you at your discretion. So you can keep doing this. So that is the bulk of the program. Uh, and now I really wanna open this up to questions that you might have about anything you saw or anything that you feel that I didn't address that you still have questions about. And uh, really kind of, you know, open it up to everyone who's here right now. Feel free to ask any question that you'd like. Go ahead, uh, Darren, is it? Uh, it's Duran. Duran, my pardon me. No worries, no worries. Uh, so I've been with the uh, New Degree Press for a while. I've known Eric for a while. He was actually my professor at one point. That's how I wrote my initial book. Um, and I'm two books in now, working on the third and thought this was pretty interesting. I'm curious about the uh, the the list, like, do you guys have a list of uh, the different distributors? Like, and- uh, so, is... so interesting you're asking me that because we had one um, that I feel is now outdated. It was really good when, when we put together our experimental program. I am going to be building a new list because there's companies, for instance, Mark Cuban um, has invested in, in, and is creating a new dis distributor for this kind of platform. There's a lot of um, ex exciting stuff because this is becoming a very big platform. And so I want to make a curated list that really caters to different styles. People are doing informational shows. People are doing workshop classroom type styles, people that um, want to put it out for free or people that want to uh, have it closed and make additional profit off it. There's a lot of different ways to go. So I want to make a, a new updated curated list, but I will have that before we begin in October. We're going to have that over the next few weeks. I'm going to be putting that together. Um, like I said, we have we have one in place already, but I feel like it's a little uh, dated now from when we use it. So I'm going to be up updating it and upgrading it. Okay, perfect. Because I, I feel like I guess that would be a uh, really important uh, one in terms of selling the ads, right? Um, knowing yes. where. Well, that's be, that's a great point because they're going to ask you where where is this going to air, and so yeah. for you to be able to just go, we're definitely doing Spotify and Audible. And then I'm going to pick a few other platforms that are appropriate, you know, to just rattle it off and go, all right, we're going to do anchor. You know, we we've made that conclusion. We're going to do, you know, and, and, um, and to be able to tell them why this is what makes you look like a professional. And it's one of the reasons why we want you to pick two distributors early in the process in phase one, before you're really out there selling advertising space. So, so really good question. Really good point on that that's thank that's you. accurate thank you who's next ellen it's colette hi hi how you doing good okay i have a question as far as and actually i'm really glad darren asked that because i felt like kind of weird like well where does the show actually get placed mm -hmm. so we'll be on spotify or apple or where yes and and so there are a lot of distributors out there. And so with the book division, it's very easy for us to, to say, look, you got to be on Ingram, Spark. They, they do Barnes and Noble. They do every library and every independent bookstore in the country. If you're not on Ingram Spark, you're not going to sell your book. And obviously you're going to be, 
you know, on Amazon. We know that, right? And then you're going to put your ebook on Kobo and, you know, and then from there you can deal with whatever other distributors you want, but we can, you know, we need to curate this based on what your show is. And there's a lot of distributors out there and you don't want to be on the wrong ones for your topic or your kind of show. So that's why I'm not just going to sit here and go, well, we're definitely doing audible. We're definitely doing, we want to make sure that we do right by you and your show. And especially because you're going to have sponsors and that is really all very important. So we want to put a package together that makes you maximize your potential and not just, Oh, we're, we're just going to throw, you know, uh, throw your shows onto the same platform. Cause you know, that's what we're doing. Like, that's not, that's not professional. It's not appropriate. It's not what I want to do. Um, Jonathan was next. Yeah. Thanks for the presentation. Really enjoyed it. Um, my question is really on the producer slash content creator relationship yes. and somewhat thinking through facilitating that relationship. What if you don't find the right producer? Mm -hmm. um, just thinking about that process in my experience writing the book, I know I had to rotate between a couple of editors before I found someone that kind of understood my style. Okay. Um, so I'm just kind of curious, you know, is there multiple producers available and yeah. You know, so, is... so the way that this works, one of the best things that I can um, do to try and put you with the right producer is have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with you, really talk through what your goals are, really talk through what you're looking for in the producer relationship and try and pair you with the right person uh, on my staff. If for whatever reason, the, the relationship doesn't work, um, then you come and see me and, you know, we change it up. I mean, it, you know, hopefully that won't happen. Right. Uh, I love all my producers. They're, they're very lovely people and, and um, really smart, really, really good at what they do, but everybody has different strengths and weaknesses and different personalities. And sometimes personalities clash. We know this. So, um, uh, so I understand that Jonathan, it's a fair question to ask. Are you trapped for eight months with a person you despise, right? <laughs> that's really the question you're asking. That's the question you want. That's how you wanted to phrase it. You were very polite and diplomatic. And I, what if this person is sucks and I hate them and I, you know, can I have my money back? No, we will. Um, we will do our best to try and um, first put you with the right person. And if for whatever reason that doesn't work the way that we hoped it would, we'll go ahead and, and make a shift. Uh, you just come and see me. Okay. Okay, great. I just want to make sure it wasn't too rigid. And yeah, uh, no, it, look, we're, we're flexible here because we're, cool. we understand this is big, big stakes and it has to be done. Right. Karen is next. Oh, wait, I can't hear you. I've got no sound. Are you still muted? Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yes. Unmute yes. Yourself. Okay. Great. Okay. Great. great. <laughs> All right. So I'm coming into this totally brand new. Um, yeah. And my question is: There can we see examples of shows, either something that you you've done or that or, or something you have yeah. in mind that we'd be creating? I'd also be interested in looking at different types of shows. I am a book a creative. Um, excuse me. No, a novel writer. So I'm mm -hmm. kind of trying to figure out where can I go here. Okay, so great, a great series of questions. I'll answer the, uh, them in order. So first of all, as soon as we finish this um, meeting, I can put those of you who are interested in our um, kind of chat room for people who are interested in this program, immediately in there, I have already put a Google link to two of the episodes uh, from two of our creators that uh, that did our program with us. And that was our experimental program where we were really learning so um, they sound great, I think, um, but we we really know even more now, you know, from what we learned there. So you're going to be able to hear two of our episodes already. Um, one of them is is from Kathleen Carney, who did um, a, a show about health and, and baking, and she was amazing. 
And um, and a lot of what we were doing in this program is based on what Kathleen Carney did because she was so wildly successful with everything she did. And um, and, and the the other one you can listen to is, is by Chris. And Chris did a more business uh, type show. Uh, he was a lawyer and he and he did a show about through how to make things um, sort of, you know, not have as acidic a work environment, ha not how to not have a toxic environment in the workplace and some ideas about that. And and so uh, those those pilots are going to be available to you as soon as we get you in that chat room. And we have we have other episodes from other creators that we can show you. Like I said, we did four complete seasons um, for um, different creators. So, you know, so we do have those if you want to even hear additional stuff. Um, the okay, other great, question you. that you had, right, was really about the fact that you're a creative type, right? So I can speak on this personally and talk about myself a little bit. Because my own background is in screenwriting and, and in um, developing pitch packages for TV shows. Um, so, so one thing I did personally was I worked with producer Mark Henry Johnson and we put the pitch package together and in New York City, met with David Simon and George Palcanos and then they took that show to HBO and that show became The Deuce. Um, so I, I helped create the initial uh, pitch package on that. So I wrote a, a book in 2013 on how to create pitch packages for TV shows. Being a fiction writer, I was able to create a nice niche for myself. And I started doing speaking engagements on that throughout the East Coast. A lot of screenwriting and TV writing organizations had me in. Um, and, and so from 2013 to about 2017 uh, I was really in a, a really good flow with that book and of course more producers hired me to help them uh, as well as just writers who didn't know how to put together what we call a show bible or a show guide and you know I really talked about what kind of material they want what's extraneous in there like a lot of people try to pitch like every episode of a season it's just a waste of time. Like nobody wants to read that. Nobody's going to, they, they know that they're going to put together a professional writing team and the episodes are going to be created in the writing room. There's no, you just pitch them the big arcs, the three major things that's going to happen in each season. So I was able to spin my career as um, my experience as a fiction writer into nonfiction subjects and put together uh, a, a nice package, uh, a portfolio that became a nonfiction entity. And I was able to make a really good business out of that. So does that help you, Karen? Yes, 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 it does. Thank you. Sure. Um, who's next? Let me see. Are there, I see uh, questions in the chat room. Are there people we can talk to about their experience going through uh, the program? Right. So uh, I know Kathleen Carney said that she'd be happy to come in and talk about it. I have to talk to um, our other creators and, and see who would be willing to come in. I'm sure that they all would. They're all lovely people. I don't um, know how busy they all are right now, but, um, but yes, uh, I can reach out to them. And we're going to be having a lot of workshops through the program. And I'm sure that I'm going to get some really good guest speakers during those uh, people that have done these pilots with us and other people that have uh, had these kinds of experiences. Hey, Alan, uh, is Kathleen Carney's show called Connecting the Dots? Yes. Okay, cool. I've been I've been listening to it. <laughs> what do you think? Well, it was really interesting because I I think three, four years ago now, I wrote her uh, my first book with Nudica Press in yeah. her same cohort. So oh, I wrote okay. the book with her and it was yeah, really cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so it's really interesting. Yeah, so you know how awesome she is. So Yeah, she's great. Yeah. Um, but yes, Connecting the Dots was the show that that um, she she did um, and it it's done really well for her. We're really excited for Kathleen and the results. 
Anyone have any other uh, questions about any part of this? Any, you know, anything that you want to ask about, um, whether it's the creative stuff, the financial stuff, any of that stuff, we can talk about any of that at greater length. Yes, um, I'm so sorry I have my camera off and I'm currently under the weather. Oh, I'm sorry <laughs> to hear that, Sally. Thank you, no worries. Um, I just wanted to ask, initially you had said that this whole process would cost about 4,000. Okay, so let me to... clarify. The pilot, you do phase one with us and that costs 4,000, right? So that's for the pilot episode. And, and um, all the stuff that you're going to learn in that first phase. And, and so once you finish phase one, you move into phase two. And phase two costs an additional 12,500, but we're not asking you to take that money out of your pocket. We want you to sell advertising uh, space in your show. And we find that the $3,000 ask per slot is very doable. Even if you have no experience with that, we're going to help you get there and do that. So uh, I don't want anyone to be sort of intimidated by the number 15,000 because to me, the number I want you to be focused on is twice that or three times that, the 30,000, the 45,000. I will be very unhappy if every one of you that joins this program doesn't make a huge profit before you even distribute this show. This is, these are not artificial numbers I'm putting out there. This is uh, very realistic when you talk about sponsorship money. They, they expect on the other side to you know, buy advertising space and shows. This is very normal for the entertainment industry. It's just a normal everyday. It's not something that's shocking. Most companies have somebody that does this in some capacity. And if you're reaching out to bigger entities like Coca-Cola or Pepsi, you know, you're not going to be talking to the person who like buys the advertisements during the Super Bowl. They have levels. So you're going to be talking to someone. They have people that actually, you know, like find little league baseball teams to sponsor. So whether it's big companies, small companies, whether it's for profit or not for profit entities, whether it's um, government institutions or uh, educational facilities like universities, you know, these, these entities are used to paying money to advertise their their product and to align with people who have a message that, you know, we're talking about the same thing. And so it's very easy. I actually did a little experiment where uh, I took a day and I put all kinds of things in Google. Like I put depression in Google and saw everything that came up. And I was like, wow, I had built a list of 50 entities off of this real quick. You know, I put water purification and of course, all the water purification companies came up. That's product alignment. But there's also ideological alignment, which is companies you wouldn't think of that want to talk about that subject. And for water purification, I found out there's, there's a group of 30 companies that are allied together, companies like Nestle and General Mills and all these other companies that aren't in water purification, but they're interested, they're vested in it. And so no matter what your topic is, you're going to find a large list of entities to talk to, and we're going to teach you what to say and how to find the right person and how to you know close those sales. And I will personally come in and help you close these sales if you need to. So uh, we have all that. So, so uh, does that clarify things for you, Sally? Because I know your question was about the breakup between the program costing um, 4000 initially and then how we get into that larger number. Does that, does that clarify um, that? Yes, but just to confirm, so we wouldn't necessarily have, we would just be earning the money, like, would it be through an Indigo campaign, like how we initially were um, marketing our books and asking for fundraising? Is that how we would go about so, it? So, um, 
there's three different ways you can do it and crowdsourcing is one of them. We're not using Indiegogo here anymore. We now have a, a nice um, business relationship with a company called attendees. And, and, um, but if you want to go about crowdsourcing, you can do that. Um, and, you know, for instance, Kathleen Carney raised about $3,500 through a crowdsource campaign. And then she sold a lot of advertisements and and was able to pay us um, really actually very well. It was like, you know, it was like no problem for her. Um, and so, for some of you that are not used to doing this stuff, uh, there may be some learning curves. That's okay. That's why we're giving you this time to to do it. That's why it's an eight month program, not a three month program. We have seen people. Um, make their show very swiftly. And so you have eight months, it, it probably won't take you eight months. But if it does, it does. That's okay. Your producer will be with you the whole time, helping you uh, no matter what methods you choose to use. If you want to self-fund some of it or all of it, if you want to crowdsource in phase one, you can. And if you want to start selling advertising space right away, uh, you can. So all of those methods are available for you. Who's next? Alan, I have a, another question. Sorry, I'll make it. That's okay. How big do you think, I mean, what are you anticipating as far as the size of the cohorts and the, the amount of people, you know, working with you and, and things like that? The more the merrier. <laughs> yeah, that's a definite salesman attitude. You know, um, <laughs> We're just starting the program now, and I know that, you know, October is coming right up. So um, I, we'll see how many people uh, want to join up now, how many people want to sign up for, for March. Um, to me, we have room. I'm not worried about it. I'm really, really confident in my producers. Our post-production team is stellar. So... Marco Merger, who runs our post-production team, is a professional's professional. If he needs to hire more post-production editors, he okay. will. If if my editors, um, I, you know, need some assistance, they'll get it. I'm not really worried about how many of you come aboard. We're not going to be overwhelmed on our on our part. I Thank promise you. you that. Thank you. For and that. you're you're never going to get into a situation where your producer is like, "Oh, I can't read that. I can't help you. I can't listen to your recordings this week because I've got a million other things to do." That's never going to happen. I won't let that happen. And if for some some reason something happens where, you know, things happen, your producer could, you know, uh get a flu or something, right? I can step in. I'm not taking any of the creators myself because I'm taking all of you. I'm yeah. going to be stepping in wherever I needed to help on every show. So you will never be alone in this process. You will never be in the dark on this process. I guarantee it. Thank you. I could ask one more question. Sure. That's all you get. It's your okay. last one. No, I'm just kidding. Right. <laughs> I'm curious if if the show does really well, if there's ever a potential to adapt it into a docu series with actual filmography uh, and videography yeah. or whatever. So here's what I'm going to tell you about this. So when I said we did a big experiment, that's what I meant. And one of the things we did, and I was talking to Colette about this the other day, was we 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 also tried video shows, and what we found out is that. Book authors who have no experience in the entertainment industry have no idea how to set up lights or cameras. And oh boy, it was terrible. Um, it was really bad. Bad things happen. But um, what I would, there's two things that I would do in the future. Um, because we're, we're really rolling out things one at a time at New Degree Studios, but we have a lot of uh, lovely plans. If I do video shows again, I'm going to vet the creators and I will accept for people that know what they're doing for people that understand how to set up the lights themselves or have people in house that, that they can use 
you know, um, Jonathan, I, I don't have a problem with it. We're just not going to pretend that people that don't have that experience can can just do that. You know, it, it, lighting it is not fun. <laughs> it didn't go well. I'll just leave it at that. It was it was I unfortunate. Trust. We I tried trust. it. It it was not. It was an epic fail, and and that's you know, it happened. Um, so so we learned. But again, data points on that. The other option for us is there's a company in San Diego that we could uh, work with that uh, would handle the production aspects with a creator. Do you know the name of that? I'm um, in, in San Diego. I, I'm not going to mention them just okay. because oh, you're in San Diego. Yeah. Yeah. I love San Diego. I yep. I love San Diego. Um, I mean, I'm in uh, Tampa. I'm not in San Diego. I'm across the country, but um, both my brothers lived in San Diego at one point. So I'm familiar with, I love old town. I love all that. So anyway, um, there's a company there that we are considering eventually getting into a professional relationship with. And if that happens, it would be very easy for us to come back and do video shows because they would handle production and post-production there. And, and we would, we would handle that and all that. And creators would actually fly out to San Diego for their production. You know, you wouldn't have to, I guess you just get in your car. So lucky you, but um, that's something that we're going to talk about in the future. Uh, what we, what we might want to do there, or we, we can talk privately. You and I, Darren. Yeah, sorry, uh, I was muted. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is my last question, but uh, do you guys, and I know this isn't like super important because it, it depends on the creator as well, but I'm mm. uh, just curious on like the, maybe the number of like creators from the last cohort that, that went profitable versus, versus not? Right, so I'm just going to say this. In, in our cohort that we did, we were seeing if we could build the shows and then what the cost structure would look like. We didn't, we didn't sell advertising space as part of the program. Creators did that on their own and brought that money in. So you would have to reach out to those creators and find out you know, uh, what they did. So we, what we did was we gained all these data points and we learned. And again, a lot of what we're doing with the advertising stuff and all of that is stuff that we wanted to bake in and um, having Kathleen Carney really kind of start that, put that in motion and all that was really informative um, for us. And uh, we've seen it also work in the book division with uh, certain book authors like Ahmed Siddiqui, who was able to get uh, MasterCard to buy 250 copies of his book and sponsor his book, and other authors like that, where we learned a lot of data points from that on. Um, the program we have now, with all this stuff and all this profitability, some of it comes from my own personal experience in um, in my 25 plus year career. And so I'm implementing stuff that I know works. And um, I know that doesn't quite answer your question as far as that goes, but we had four creators that successfully made their shows and, um, and where they went from there with them in terms of that profitability. Uh, you know, we encourage them to take those steps. So Got it. Got it. Thank you. Sure. It's a fair, it's a fair question to ask how many people, you know, got to the 15 K you guys are going to be the first cohort to go after that money. But I'm going to tell you this, that everybody that I know in, in the corporate world, uh, from people who've written books to people that, are, that I just know in the corporate world, um, think that $3,000 for, uh, advertising space is, is a ridiculously low number. It's a low ask. And nobody should have a hard time getting it if they follow the program. If, if, you, you, if you work with your producer, have a script that's vetted, um, do the research on the company website or on LinkedIn and find the right contact person 
and reach out. You might end up talking to secretaries and we teach you, you know, how to, you know, um, get past those secretaries to the right people and make the secretaries your allies and, and not have them stonewall you. And so all kinds of stuff like that will help you um, get into conversations. And again, with the $3,000 per ad ask, the first person you talk to that's the right person should be able to clear up to three of those ads for a $9,000 sale. You'll be surprised how uh, quickly and easily that will happen if you approach it professionally, if you have the right messaging, and if you have one-to-one -one alignment with that entity. So um, that's what we're looking at there. Is that helpful? Yeah, no, I think I think that is super helpful. Uh, I I know you're saying that it's not a huge ask ask for those companies, and I agree. Um, especially looking at like maybe content creators and like how they go about it, right? But typically, uh, they're showing numbers beforehand, right? That that we wouldn't be showing beforehand. So right? first, that's, first that's, of all, and here's the thing. Um, so so great point. What they're typically interested in with new creators is what are you what are you selling? What's your message here? So first of all, um, if you're every everybody that you're selling advertising space to after you finish the pilot can literally listen to your pilot episode. That's huge. If you've got a book, you can give them the book. And these are your data points. You're an expert on a subject. So uh it's it becomes one of those things where you're selling you and yes you're right about the fact that you know people who already have like a an internet following uh, like i got a hundred thousand likes on my message yesterday have an easier time than people who don't but we find that uh, if you're putting a show out about a particular message and you get one-to-one -one alignment, companies want to help you. They will help promote the show. They they will actually, some companies will actually put a clip of it on their own website. These are things that can be negotiated in the deal. So it's really about, you know, finding the right business partners. And And when you think about it that way, when you think about you've got a brand, you're the expert on this information and, and you're selling yourself and you're selling the one-to-one -one alignment, you can convince these entities to come in and become your business partners. And just like we talked about earlier, it helps if you know what platforms you're going to be on. I'm going to be on these distribution uh, platforms, you know, and this is our goal. And, you know, our goal is to get a following of 10,000 listeners and we're going to be building that over, you know, a year into a year and a half. Your advertisements aren't, uh, aren't just on there for a month or two. Your advertisements are a permanent part of those episodes. They're always going to hear you. So everybody who listens to the show now, everybody who listens to the show later, they're going to hear your ad it's permanently part of the show and so those are things that are selling points and th that's the kind of stuff that companies like to hear they like to you know hear where you're going with it what the plans are not just for the immediate distribution but how we're going to grow it and who they're going to be exposed to who's next or does that do you have no, that was, I know that was, you unpaused yourself. That was perfect. Yeah, I was going to say thank you. Thank oh, okay. You. You're welcome. <laughs> Who's next? Don't be shy. Some of you are have been here uh, for the presentation and, and haven't asked anything yet. It's okay. Um, if you have questions that are personal or related to finances and things like that, that you don't want to put out in the public since this is recorded, we can have talk about that in our one-on-one -on -one meetings. Um, but do feel free to put out anything that might be specific to your show because other people here in the room or other people who may watch this sooner or later may be thinking about a similar type of show. So go ahead and ask me anything. 
We've All got right, another I'll take, 15 minutes. Okay, go I ahead. I can take your offer. Sorry. Okay, <laughs> go right ahead. Um, I'm wondering if you've seen anyone be able to add stack as in put all the advertisements up front without actually intersplicing the content itself. Um, just, just as a way of preventing distraction throughout it. If you have a very, so, so the advertisers hate that. Yeah, no, I know. So, so <laughs> that is really, you see that, you know, on TV with professional sports uh, thing in, in just a little while, I will be watching kickoff for uh, the bills and Rams and you're going to see a lot of ad stacking uh, right up front. And I feel like this format, unless you have companies that are aligned with each other in such a way that they, they won't find it problematic um, or are so not aligned like, you know, if you have a water purification company, because you're talking about water purification, then you have, uh, you know, Snickers or whatever, you know, just because you got Snickers or, you know, somebody had Snickers and they said yes. Um, but for the most part, people who, who will sign contracts for this, when it's their time for their company's ad to shine, they want that to be iso in isolation. But that is something that you can negotiate. Again, you know, if you're talking to companies, you might want to say, we'll do ad stacking at the top of the episode for 3000 Or if you want your ad to be in isolation, it's 5000 So there's negotiations to be had there. And, and um you know, it, it's really how, how confident you feel about what you're doing and, and how experienced you are and who you know. You know, if you have business relationships, you're like, I know I can get $6,000 from these people. Then why sell it for 3000 when you can sell it for six, right? So that's really, you know, kind of, um, it, that becomes an individual you know, your business savvy with, you know, but for the most part, we know that entities want to be in isolation. So, you know, for the, for the majority of our creators who are new to this, because you mentioned before we started that you're doing a podcast, you're, you're a little experienced at this, Jonathan. Um, so for people who it's their first go, we don't want to create problems in selling. And it's a real problem sometimes that, well, who am I going to be paired with? Who am I going to be matched up with? You know, it's like, that's a hard, that, that, that takes a soft sell into a hard sell sometimes. And, and then they might give you a list of 20 companies. They're like, we can't be paired with any of these, you know? And so it becomes harder. So you have to be cognizant of that. And we do recommend that for every sponsor you do get, you give, you let them give you three companies that won't be part of the same episode. And um, when you're doing short episodes that are, you know, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, it's hard to space them out where you have actual enemies that don't want to, you know, you, you ain't stacking Coke and Pepsi. You know what I mean? You know, it's they're not going to do it. And even with something like the Super Bowl or the World Series, you'll see like one of them in the first hour, one of them in like the third hour. You know, there's separation. This is stuff that companies expect. So, again, if you have a little more professional savvy and you're used to dealing with these entities and you feel confident, I can talk them into stacking and that's going to help my show. Then, you know, I'm not going to say don't do it, you know, do it. But um, if you're inexperienced, if, if you're, if this is your first go at it, I wouldn't recommend it. That's going to make the sale harder and no real reason to do it because it's not like you're really trying to sell four or five per episode where you really need to stack. 
You know, one 20 second ad in the middle of your 20 minute show is really not that much of a distraction. It's really not. So don't, don't overthink it and, and cost yourself sales. If you're like, we're, we're thinking of doing, you know, we're playing stack and they're like, we're, we're only going to do it in isolation. Just say, okay, you know, we'll do isolation, you know, in episode three, you can have, you know, do you want the early spot or the late spot? Just give yourself that room for negotiations, you know? Okay. Thanks. Yeah. That was a great question. That was good. Um, next. Anybody? Yes. Go ahead. Karen, you're still so muted. Yeah, no, 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 I am <laughs> muted. Okay, all right. So now I'm taking this back to, okay, so no no experience in this. It would be the first go around. So mm-hmm. when you start this, um, these cl- uh, these your classes or the cohort, do you, um, or by when do you have to sign the contract? Do you just sign the contract pretty much at the get-go? Well, or I'm expecting you, have... you all to sign a contract by 5 p.m. tomorrow, actually. Oh, no, no, no. That's what I was... Here's the thing. Um, or do you, you have... Wait, let, let me finish my question. Oh, go ahead. All right. Or, or do you have time, do you know, to sort of figure out what, what you're doing and what we're doing here? For example, when I was writing my book... Um, I actually, um, you know, after like about a month, I think I, I changed everything. I changed, I, I, I changed topic. I changed genre. Mm-hmm. I, I, I did a complete change. And so I think for some of us, we're not really sure. For me, at so, least, I'm really so not sure where I'm going. Here's where, what I, here's the answer to that question. Okay. Cause it's a great question. The answer to that question is, is that after um, we finish the seminar, I'm going to put you all into our um, chat room for people interested in the program. I have a lot of information that you can look at right away, like the preparedness documents. It's going to ask you a million questions about, you know, for you to think about. I can give those to you right away. You don't have to wait until you sign the contract to see those. And that's going to get you thinking about what you have or what kind of show you want to do. The other thing is, is, you know, is this show going to derive largely from the book you wrote or is it going to be new material and if it's going to be new material what i suggest everyone does is is you start kind of doing little kind of like outlines for yourself just bullet point and say okay here's a bunch of subjects that i would approach in different ep- how many episodes do i have how many things do i have to talk about about that subject is does this look like it's a 10 minute show or a 20 minute show. Am I going to do interviews with experts or people that have experience with these things? Or am I just going to be the only one talking, you know? Um, And so you can start to flesh that out over the next few weeks. And again, come and see me privately, have a one-on-one meeting. I'm very good at this. I've been doing this for, you know, decades. I'm a show builder. That's what I am. That's my strength. I've helped a lot of um, people build shows, whether whether it's writers or producers. And, and, you know, I love these kinds of collaborative meetings where I kind of, I have kind of a series of questions that privately, you know, I can ask you really, we can get to the nitty gritty. And then I can make recommendations for you on what I think. And, and so you all have access to my calendar link and the best thing for us to do, if you're not sure, um, you know, where to go with it, you like, you like the sound of the program, but you're not sure what kind of show come and see me and let's, let's figure that out together. Cause you know, you, you don't want to be in a situation where you, where you start putting stuff together in the first month And then you completely change directions. If that happens, again, that's another reason why we have eight months. Most people will complete their, you know, the bulk of the work in four months. You know, recording the material once you have the scripts is not an arduous process. And so it's it's really about making sure that you're organized, you have everything together, and some of you may have, we all have discoveries during the creative process. That's why it's the creative process. And 
for those of you that do have those discoveries and go, okay, this show isn't going to be what I thought it was. I actually need to throw all this stuff out. Um, that's what we want to find out in phase one when we're doing our pilot before we start putting together the seven to nine other episodes. We don't want to be working on six episodes and throw all of that away. We just want to be working on that first episode. So looks like we lost a lot of people that had to go, but um, we've only got three minutes left anyway. So, um, but I hope that answered your question, Karen. You're muted. <laughs> it, it, it answered my question. I think really the thing to do now is, yeah, I'm really interested in seeing, um, you know, examples of what you've got. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think Perfect. that's wonderful. Um, if anybody has, has another question, I'll take it. Otherwise, we can wrap it up here. And um, any anything, Sally? No? Okay. No, thank you. All right. So thank you very much for coming tonight. It was wonderful um, to meet those of you I've met for the first time and, and to see everybody else. And um, for those of you that didn't attend here live but are watching this recording, if you have questions that weren't answered, uh, private DM me. And if you're interested in getting into that chat room I talked about to ask questions there, let me know in that private DM. I'll add you immediately. And if you just want to go into a one-on-one -on -one meeting with me, everyone can have my calendar link and I'm really happy to see each of you. So have a great night. Um, thanks for coming. I'm glad the weather held up. It's supposed to be major thunderstorms, but it held out. So we got it all done. So thanks a lot. And um, I'll see you all later. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it.